Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another tutorial from Enlist Q. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic in Q called enumeration. Those of you who are familiar with other programming languages might already know the overall concept of enumeration. So what is enumeration and why might you want to use it? Enumeration is an ordered listing of a list of values. For example, suppose you have a list of fruits such as apple, mango, orange, and peach. Instead of using integers to represent these fruits, you can simply use the names of the fruits. Without enumeration, you would potentially represent these fruits as apple equal to zero, mango equals one, orange equals two, and peach equals three. This can be error prone since you might try to use an integer such as let's say nine, which uh, you don't have a variable assigned to. Instead, you can use enumeration to define a custom data type with values of your fruits only. This data type has limited domain and uses descriptive names, which is less error prone. Besides these obvious benefits, enumeration allows us to normalize data. Since we are using a time series database, data normalization is the main benefit we get from enumeration. Instead of storing a list of duplicate values such as, let's say, apple, orange, apple, mango, apple again, orange, orange, mango, we can store a list of unique values and their indices, which would be a list of integers. This is much easier to store and traverse since it's a fixed length, compact list of numbers instead of variable strings. Additionally, it makes it super easy to update a value through one update operation instead of updating each value. All right, enough talking. Let's take a look at an example. We have a list of fruits that contain duplicate values. So let's call it V and let's give it some values. Apple, orange, apple again, mango, apple again, orange again, orange again, and then mango again. All right, so we have this list. Storing this list would be inefficient since it contains symbols of variable lengths and would be difficult to search through it as well. Additionally, if we wanted to replace all the apples with bananas, we would have to update three values in the list since apple appears three times. So how can we solve these problems? Let's create a new list which has only unique values of list V. So let's call it U and it's going to be all the distinct values of v. So we'll see, u has only three elements, apple, orange, and mango. Now let's, now we'll create one more list which contains the indices of these unique values as they appear in the list v. So we can call that k and u dollar sign v. So this is what K looks like. <clears throat> You'll notice that we can recreate our original list V by simply using our two new lists, U and K. So this is our original list. And if we do U and K like this, you'll see we get the same list back. And just to be sure, we can do a match of the two lists and <clears throat> it confirms that they're both the same. This means that instead of storing our original list, which contains duplicates and symbols of variable lengths, we can store two new lists, one that contains only the unique values, which is list u, and another that only contains fixed length integers, which is k. This is a more efficient way of storing the original list. Now, if we wanted to update value of apple to banana, we only need to perform one operation. For example, We can set the first element in our unique list so that instead of apple, it's banana. You can see now our original list, the unique elements list is banana, orange, mango instead of apple, orange, mango. And if we run u of k again, you'll see that all the apples are now replaced by bananas. 
As you can see, we only had to update the list with unique values. This is very useful when you have a list that contains millions of values. With this in mind, let's discuss enumeration specifically in Q. So in Q, the process of converting a list of symbols to a list of integers is called enumeration. This can be achieved by using the dollar operator. So yes, dollar operator is overloaded in Q, as you must know by now. And this is just one of many use cases. And here's what the enumeration looks like. Oops, sorry, need to. Need to get our original list back. And now we can enumerate using this syntax. Here, u is the domain of your enumeration, and tick, back tick u dollar sign is the enumeration over u. Under the hood, the dollar operator gets the list of indices, which is the list k, and replaces each symbol with its index. All of this is hidden from the user, so you never have to worry about it, but it's good to know how it works. So basically what we did before assigning a list to all of these values of fruits with duplicates, then getting a new list with only the unique values, and then creating another list k with just the positions of these unique values with respect to where they occur on the original list. Creating all this uh, just so that we have another way of creating the original list uh, that can be stored in a more efficient manner and can be updated uh, without any issues very efficiently. Um, we can also do the same thing, but instead of following all these steps, we can just use the syntax here with backtick u dollar v, and it gives us the exact same list as our original list. But all of this is hidden from us, so under the hood, it's a very efficient way of storing the original list, but you still get the, the same list back. Additionally, this list is only applicable to the original domain, which is just the three unique fruits, apple, orange, and mango. So make sure that you don't have any other values besides the one that you are working with. So it's less prone to errors. Now, I hope you liked this tutorial and it helped you understand what enumeration is in general and how it is specifically used in Q and KDB+. Enumeration is required when you want to save a table with a sim column to disk. We'll discuss that in more detail in a future tutorial. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave a comment or email me at himanshu at See you next time.